Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following message that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a translation of a message that I received. The translation of that message reads like this. Hello Brother Nashi, can you please post for me as hidden identity? I have my own story that I want to share with you. So this story, my brother, when it happened to me, it was in the year 2015. That is when I came across a situation in my life whereby I ended up being a ritualist. At that time, I was still working as a security guard. So I was working for this other company, but the salary that I was getting, my brother, it was not a lot of money. It was just a struggle. Each and every day was just a struggle for me. No matter how hard you will try to save money, but how can you save money that is not even enough for you to buy food for yourself i could not even afford to buy even a new pair of shoes when i had came to south africa there was this other pair of shoe of mine that i was wearing when i was coming to south africa and my brother i was still wearing that same shoe when i'll be going around going to work when i'll be going to do my peace jobs and also going to town for my grocery shopping life was really hard i remember that when i had arrived in south africa i arrived in south africa this was somewhere in the year 2014 or there when i came to south africa i didn't know anyone as such but what had happened is that my mother them had spoken with this other man who came from the same village from where she grew up in. So this man, he had his own son who had came to South Africa. His son, when he had came to South Africa, I think that it was in 2008 or 2007. But ever since that man's son had came here to South Africa, he had never returned back to Zim. So my mom had been given some phone numbers that were written on a piece of paper by that man in that village from where my mom grew up in. So my mom had given me that piece of paper with the phone number and my mom had told me that when I'll be in South Africa, all that I had to do was to get in communication with that man's son so that he can try to get a job opportunity for me. For me. But when I came here to South Africa, the first thing that I did is that I asked someone who had a mobile phone and I gave them the number that were written on that piece of paper. Then that number, the first time it went through, and when I started speaking with that guy, I clearly had the, the guy, he was from Zim, but he didn't want to get in communication with me. He dropped the call, and after dropping the call, the more that I tried getting into contact with him, for the sake of his father, he would just drop his call until finally I then saw that the number was no longer in use. It was now going to voicemail. I then saw that I didn't know anyone here in South Africa, so I had to do what I had came here to do. I then started hustling my brother, hustling like no man's business. But the way that I was hustling, it was just a struggle for me, Brother Nashi, because the money that I was earning, it was just like a 20 rand year, a 10 rand year. The money was never enough for me. All that I could do with the money that I was hustling was for me just to buy like milli meal and buy cabbage and cooking oil. That was all. That was when I met this other man when i met this dude i still remember that on that day i was walking from town there was a man who had told me that there was a peace job there in town so i had gone to do that peace job after i had done that peace job the man then said that you could only pay me at the end of the month and he even refused to give me any money for transport so without having any money i then decided to walk on foot from town going back to the location where i was staying as i was walking that was when a car stopped 
for me it was a bmw car at first i was scared to get inside that car but when i had gotten into the car that was when i found out that this guy that was when i found out that this guy that was driving the car I had seen him somewhere. He then told me that he was going to that same location where I was staying. And he told me that he was staying in that location. He had his house in that same location. But this man, he was a vendor speaking man. And he told me that he could offer me a working opportunity at the company that he had recently started. When he told me that he had started a company and he was willing to offer me a working opportunity, I was was really happy and I thought that now my days of struggling were finally over. This was a security company according to that man. At the time when he had offered me that working opportunity, he said that he had gotten hold of a tender and so he was going to need some security officers but at that time he had gotten some posts where security guards were needed at some private residential areas and quickly he needed some security officers he said that he had given me the task to look for two more guys these two guys that i was going to look for strictly he wanted guys that were from zim so that we could quickly get the ball running without any questions being asked. When I returned into that location after he had dropped me off, I went and I spoke with two of my guys, the same guys that I was struggling with. We used to do a lot of peace jobs together. Then I went and I spoke with that man and I told him that I had gotten hold of two more guys that were from Zim and we were all willing to work. My brother, we were given some reflectors that was all we were given no uniform no what just a reflector he then told us that he was going to pick us up somewhere around 4 p.m so that he can take us to those private residential areas where we were going to be working as security guards my brother we went back home and we prepared and we waited for him to come and pick us up so this was like a daily thing each and every day we used to go to those private residential areas to be working as security guards. This man, whenever we would be going to our working post, he kept on promising us a lot of money. My brother, as someone who was earning somewhere around 600 rands, when a man promises you somewhere around 10,000 rands, if you work harder each and every month, you will work like no man's business because sometimes I would work for three straight days without getting any rest, no off, no what, no one coming to relieve you from your duty because there was a lot of shortage that was in his company. He said that we were supposed to help him to get a reputation for his company so that the papers that he was waiting for, by the time that those papers would have been processed, everything will be working out good for us and he was going to give us a lot of money and he said that at the time instead of him hiring south africans it was going to take a lot of time getting them registered and things like that and they were going to require a lot of money and at that time since his company was a very small company he was in no position to get guys that were expensive that is why he had chosen to hire guys from zim we were basically working for nothing my brother we were just working for nothing because the men he had said that he was going to start by giving us something like 600 rands a month. But soon after the papers had been processed, that was when he was going to increase our salaries even up to 10,000 rands a month. This is what he used to tell us. After the man had finally gotten his contracts, he then forgot about us. He started insulting us and that was when everything just changed. He told us that since we were from Zim, we didn't have that thing that is called Sira that would allow you to work as a security guard. So he was finding it very difficult to get us registered and we were not allowed to be working at the government office sites where he had gotten more most of his contracts and that was when he started looking for other security guards that were fully 
qualified since we were like useless in his company now i was really heartbroken because at that time when i started working for this guy he had nothing my brother you could see that this guy indeed is an entrepreneur but he is nothing all that he had was a dream and we had tried to make sure that his dream will become reality even after the money had been deposited into his company account my brother he even called us at his house and when we went there there was a bright thing that was happening there and he promised us that he was going to increase our salary but when the morning came he had forgotten about all of those promises that he had promised to us even there were days whereby we would walk on foot for many kilometers and he would have told us that he didn't have any money and sometimes he would not have any petrol to take us to the places where we were working. Sometimes we would even walk as far as 20 kilometers on foot just thinking that things were going to work out for us. But after he was given the contract, he then started posting security officers that were fully qualified and he just dumped us. But the way that he dumped us, Brother Nashi, he didn't fire us like telling us that you guys are fired. No, that is not what he did. The way that we started working, we were now working as security guards at different Indian wholesalers like your cash and carries wholesalers like that. And the salary, my brother, that we were getting, it was close to nothing almost close to nothing because from 600 rands when i started working for him he had said that for now he could only afford to increase our salaries by 50 rands a year like if this year you will be earning 600 rands then then it will mean that the following year you will be earning 650 rands a year he would only increase in such a way because at that time his company was too small so this meant that for me to get somewhere around 1000 rands a month as my salary it was going to take me years and years and years when the guy then got the money into his business account he started driving very big cars he then totally forgot about us and the other guy who were his first workers and then that was when he hired his fellow South Africans and they started working for him. They really had a very nice uniform. So the way that they had designed the uniforms, if you were a South African, you will be wearing a different uniform from a Zim guy. Means for me and my other guys who were from Zim, we didn't have a nice uniform at all. What he had done is that he had just gone to pep when he had gone to that pep store he then bought some gray trousers and a white shirt and a pair of shoes and he said that that one was our uniform he didn't have a logo or anything he then instructed us on what to say he said that if anyone asks you what company you are working for you are not supposed to tell them the truth as to whom are you working for this is what he told us he said that if anyone asks you who do you work for or if you ever get arrested by the police and if the police ask you where are your working documents then you should never let them know that you are working for me because you do not have any proper documentation at all life was very difficult he said that if you tell them that you are working for my company then you will get me and my company into trouble and i do not want to be in trouble so that was the way that we were living the way that we were living brother nashi by the time that we we're still staying in the location i can say that it was far much better than the time that we were now staying at this other whole cell at the back of the whole cell because this guy in one month after he had failed to give us our salary he then came and he picked us up he was now driving a very nice toyota pickup he told us that we had to load our stuff into the back of his toyota pickup he then went with us at this other whole cell and he told us that he had spoken with that indian that he had a post at his warehouse and he said that we were now 
are going to be staying at that whole cell that was owned by that Indian guy. So at the back of that whole cell, there was another empty building which they had used when they had studied that warehouse. So we used to sleep in that empty building without privacy or anything. It was really tough, my brother. Sometimes we could only get paid somewhere on the 15th of the following month, which means that we were going to work for 45 days before receiving your salary. That same 600 rands, brother Nashi. But some of his new workers, the ones that he had hired, the ones that he had said that they were allowed to be working as security guards, they were getting the money that was quite good. At that time, they were earning somewhere around 3,500 rands to 3,600 rands. And during those years when I was in South Africa, it was a good amount of money to be earning as a security officer. So when I saw that this is what was happening, I then spoke with my mom. She was still alive at that time. After I had spoken with my mom, she really felt sad with everything that had been happening to me because ever since I had arrived here in South Africa, I had even struggled to send my mom anything. Life was just tough. Each and every month, I'll be complaining that I do not have any money at all. My mom then decided that maybe it was not good for me to be in South Africa. God was trying to show me a sign that it was far much better to go back home in Zim. Maybe, my brother, if I had stayed in South Africa, God would have saved my soul. I then decided to go back home to Zim. When I went back home, there was a problem.